If you were to visit the 100 most recently reported top malware sites, your computer would be destroyed. And worse, you would have info stealers running on your system, collecting any saved passwords that they can use to hack into your online accounts. I know this because we ran that test a couple of weeks ago. Now that is of course without an antivirus, but thankfully most of you have an antivirus, even if you didn't install it. And that is called Windows Defender, which is a huge difference between Windows in 2013 and Windows in 2023. So that is exactly what we're going to put to the test today. We're going to see how effective Windows Defender is in protecting the average user from some of the most recently reported threats. In order to do that, just like last time, we're going to use an automated Python script that is going to download and run 100 of the top recently reported malware links. So let the games begin. As you can see, we're creating a folder on the desktop called malware. That's where we're going to be downloading the malware and executing it. We've already got one file that executed successfully. And if we take a look, you can see that it is running right now. It's got 53 detections, another one with 26 detections running, but a lot of them are being blocked by Windows Defender. And as you can see, we've got a nice you know, cross on the Windows Defender logo that shows that it's active and it is detecting threats. The system is kind of uh, laggy at the moment. Um, I am struggling to select Windows Defender here. And that is one of the small issues I've noticed. It does get overwhelmed and doesn't have the most friendly user interface for dealing with threats. We just had an IP logger execute. Thankfully, I'm behind a VPN. But again, already, these are much better results than what we experienced before when we ran the test without Windows Defender. Our system was already nuked. Whereas now, even though we are having some threats execute and we are having some errors on the screen, we still have an operational system. A lot of these, by the way, do seem like uh, remote access tools or, you know, common software like PuTTY that are used legitimately, but perhaps they're downloaded from a site where the attacker is going to use it to kind of hijack or do some kind of remote control. So we have tested a hundred URLs now, and we managed a detection rate of 89%. So just shy of 90, but at the end of it, I don't see any major malware process active on the system. It's really funny to see source2.exe as one of the malware samples, given that Counter-Strike 2 was released recently. But overall, I'd say we fared a lot better than without any kind of antivirus whatsoever. And this is a huge upgrade from the days of Windows XP, where if we did this, there would be no chance of having an operational system. We would have 20,000 pop-ups right now. God knows what kind of rootkit on our system. Viruses would have infected every single EXE on this computer. Whereas now I'm reasonably confident that uh, even if we did have some malware, it's not that terrible of a situation. Windows Defender, of course, is still detecting threats. And I'm going to give it a chance to um, completely remove as many of these as it can. And after that, I'm going to do some second opinion scans in order to really verify if there are any infections in the system, any active malware. I don't see any in uh, process monitor right now, but of course there could be other kinds of traces. We're going to look into that. But since Windows Defender does like to take its time with these things, and we do have active detections of things like Cobalt Strike, we've got a Luma Stealer, which is again an info stealer that would try to collect your account credentials and pass words and use them to hack your accounts. And info stealers really are a major threat for home users because you may not care these days if your computer is infected by malware. But if you do get hit by an info stealer like this, the repercussions could be well beyond just your system getting affected. It could be losing access to your Google account, your YouTube account, potentially your bank account. So it's good to see that uh, this one is indeed detected by Windows Defender. We're going to go ahead and quarantine it. And I do want to stress how much better Windows is nowadays when it comes to blocking malware that's in the wild, especially if it's a malware link and you're downloading directly from there. A lot of that protection though is based on the cloud analysis. So if you do use Windows Defender, 
you need to make sure you use the cloud delivered protection because turning that off or when Windows Defender is not able to access the internet, the protection is greatly diminished. And that is because Microsoft relies a lot on sandbox analysis in the cloud in order to be able to tell if a file is malicious. Since the Windows Defender prompts have stopped coming, and as you can see, we are back to a green check mark now, I did do a couple of second opinion scans, one by Hitman Pro, which only detected two pieces of malware. And keep in mind, these are files that have been downloaded into the folder, not something that was installed or embedded within the system. So it's very superficial. I also did a scan with Malwarebytes and it detected three files. Again, all of these are on the desktop, so nothing particular in terms of impact. Now we did have an IP logger run, so that was a bit unfortunate. So there could have been some kind of information stealing going on in the short period of time while those processes were executing. Perhaps some of them were intercepted by Windows Defender during execution, but overall these are not terrible results and they're massively better than what would happen if you didn't have an antivirus. If you want to see what would happen, then definitely check out the previous video that I did. Having said that, are these the best results that I have seen in terms of the different antivirus products in the industry? No, I have seen better results and also it's worth keeping in mind we only tried 100 files, but is it good enough that an average user can just run Windows without having to worry about having to go and get an antivirus as an essential part of their computer? Yes, I think it does meet that threshold. Now, just out of personal curiosity, since we did just install Malwarebytes and if you don't know, Malwarebytes is now capable of real-time protection, not just as a second opinion scanner, but as a main antivirus that replaces Windows Defender. So I'm kind of curious how it would do in the exact same test. So we're just gonna rerun it. You just saw me run it a few moments ago, so why not just give it another go? Once again, we're doing the same thing and the first link is blocked. We're going to wait and see how many of these are blocked and how many are executed. We're seeing some prompts from Malwarebytes, obviously trying to intercept the execution and blocking access to the websites. A lot of these are blocked due to Trojan and it does seem like, you know, the test was interrupted before it could complete, potentially because Malwarebytes saw, um, yeah, that kind of explains it. So Malwarebytes just saw a lot of things being launched by the same script and decided to terminate it. So in order to get around that, we've just excluded Python from all detections now, and we're going to rerun the test. And still, we had all 100 URLs blocked directly by Malwarebytes. So a bit cleaner than Windows Defender for sure, but it will be interesting to see how they all fare in a bigger detection task. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it because there is a severe lack of technical information and actual tests when it comes to such topics. And in the absence of that, it's just a bunch of random opinions on Reddit. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Were you surprised by the results? Were you impressed by Windows Defender? Are you happy to see how far Windows has come in this regard? Do you consider third-party protection these days? Happy to hear everybody's thoughts in the comments below. But before you go, do check out our sponsor. This video is sponsored by CrowdSec, a community-based intrusion detection system that is entirely open source and available for you to use for free. You can deploy it on Windows or Linux, and once you log in, you're going to have a wonderful dashboard for all of your devices. And as you can see, you've got several different scenarios that you're protected against, including things like RDP brute force, people trying to hack your system through the remote desktop protocol, protection against backdoor, several vulnerabilities. It can protect your server and it can protect your network. Once you sign up, you can add a new device by simply typing this command into your CrowdSec console, which you can access by going to C program files CrowdSec once you install it. And if we open a terminal here, you can see that we can run various commands. So for example, if I wanted to get a list of scenarios, I just need to type CSCLI scenarios list, and it's gonna give me all of the scenarios that are active on the system. The CrowdSec console is quite capable. It allows you to manage alerts, manage your bouncers, which can be Windows firewall. You've got extensive documentation on their website on how to use all of their internal tools. 
And as a community-driven platform, you have lots of opportunities to extend the capabilities and contribute. So for those of you who are interested, if you're working in a SOC or you're managing some kind of network, do check them out using link in description and show them some love for supporting the PC Security Channel. They've been a sponsor for a long time. So I'd really appreciate just clicking link in description and taking a look. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.